Probably. The Games Workshop of today is a very different beast to what it was when I was younger. For starters, they don't threaten their stockists and make them put their products in pole position at the front of the shop to improve Games Workshop sales. So that's... that's progress. But the prevailing thing that we as consumers have noticed is the drastic difference in release scheduling. I don't really want to touch on that because it's basically a chosen business model which seems to be working for them and for me to speculate on anything else would just be a talking head video about needless speculation which isn't really helpful to anyone, uh, myself and you included, so let's not bother with that. If like me you went hard on your initial investments into the hobby, well basically uh, you fucked. You got fucked! <laughs> yeah, you're fucked, I'm fucked, we're all fucked, we're drowning in gear, it's too late for us. And we can sit here and we can say, yeah, this is great, this is fun, this is good, this is awesome, this is cool, this is not really that cool. Yeah, great, keep it coming. That is really heavy, actually. Should have left that sealed. That's worth a lot of money. But if you are new to the hobby and you've been steaming headfirst into it, well done for the enthusiasm, that's great. But if you think you might be getting into it a little bit too fast, here are five little tidbits of information and tips that I, as a high priest at the altar of previously well-intentioned purposes, aka the pile of shame, feel qualified at this stage to share. So dust off Indian Yappa Pie punishment strap number one, here we go. Give me Yappa Pie Indian punishment strap number one! Things change. Yeah, if you're buying because you know or you've been told that this model, this absolutely essential purchase is great on the tabletop, that can change. In fact, that has been a growing trend among some friends of mine and other channels that I talk to. A not unsubstantial amount of people are turning away from the Warhammer-centric side of the hobby because basically things they invested a lot of money in just don't swing their dicks on the table no more. What are we doing here, mate? Are we rolling? Are we rolling? We are rolling. Oh! You've made it. I made it. I've oh. finally made it. Oh, God. Hello. There it is. It's on 16 mil. On then. 16 mil? Look at this, mate. Wow. Look at this, mate. <laughs> Such whip. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to Krigoras, mate. You want anything? What the fuck does that mean? Greg's. Greg was. Greg was. Greg was. On sausage rolls, so we'll play. Put it back in your pants. Bye, mate. Bye, mate. Fucking hell. He finally got his moment on camera. 30 seconds for him to sling his dick in the frame. Nine hours for me to set everything back up. Yeah, a model that got stealth nerfed overnight, or an entire army that you bought that was quite fun to play, like not necessarily tournament cheesy and beardy, but like just fun to play, can suddenly not be fun to play anymore and actually a complete hassle. And I say this mostly as a casual player that plays with different grades of players, I guess. If my model did something last month, it might not be able to do that this month, and I'm then getting lectured by people on how to play with my toy soldiers that I bought with my pocket money. Um, and I just want to fucking play, so it can be an issue. So if you're new to the hobby, I would definitely recommend avoiding meta chasing. It's just a thing that you can't keep up with. Unless you 3D print your models, but then that's a new thing, isn't it? That's just a new thing. Number two! You can't paint everything unless you're Elston. But generally, you, me, anybody, can't paint everything. If it's the appeal of a beautiful fully painted army on the tabletop or a display shelf that slaps your tackle and butters your pickle, buy slower. And if you don't buy slow enough, you will ultimately end up with more models than you can ever paint, or at least enjoy painting. Boxes and boxes and boxes, and look, more boxes of previously well-intentioned purchases you won't ever get to paint. Just being real, it's happened to pretty much everyone in the hobby at this point, is they have too much stuff, they can't paint it all, it happens. And even without factoring the painting in, there's only so many things you can build in a certain amount of time. Check out this video from Elstonation where he builds absolutely every model he owns that is currently not assembled. Hmm. Hmm. I love Elston. He's my happy little teddy bear crossed with a garden gnome, but his pile of models absolutely gives me palpitations. What's up guys, Tony Stefano here, back in perpetual form of motion. And I'm here to talk to you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Ever thought about a new way to keep track of your hobby projects? Well, with Squarespace's built-in blogging system, you can do just that. Make a splash page, customize the theme, and then list all your blog posts in date order so people can easily find what to read. All right. Or maybe you just want to make an interest page about that one thing that you love more than anything else in your life, and that's for me, my boy in a gas. Using the browser-based tools from Squarespace, I can make a love note to my favorite Lord of the Undead in minutes. Setting up a web page has never been easier. Just pick your favorite template, customize, and then do what you want with it. 
Oh yeah, there we go. A page worthy of Nagashim Shelf. All this and more in a single, easy to use, browser-based format. It even has domain registration built in, so you can register a new domain and link it to your website right away. So do you and me a favor, head to squarespace.com forward slash MSPaints and use the code MSPaints at checkout to save 10% of your first website subscription or domain. All right, bye now. Number three. FOMO, 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 F-O-M. Fear of missing out is bullshit. Well, the fear itself isn't bullshit because that's a functional marketing gimmick that actually works. The engineered scarcity that drives it, that's bullshit. Take it from me, someone who has a trade account, you know, tied to a brick and mortar installation, barring three to four releases that sold out immediately, like the Sisters Limited Edition box set. Over the last three or four years I've had the account, I've been able to get everything in unlimited quantities pre and post release. And the stuff that they told me was gonna be a hot seller, I still got fucking loads of it. Didn't get me on Dominion though. They didn't get me on Dominion trying to sell me 10 copies of fucking Dominion. Holy shit. <laughs> my friendly local game store still has five copies of Leagues of Votan. My local boys still has copies of Dominion, as does my friendly local game store. And copies of Dominion coming out of their ass. And I distinctly remember during that whole Cursed City shit show that nearly every game store I went to in that month had a handful of copies sat on the shelves doing fuck all. Yeah, there's weekend exclusives and store anniversary things, but they tend to be quite little small packages. But even then, you see local games workshop stores saying, oh, still got some of these left on the shelf if anyone wants one. These limited edition things, there's still 12 of these Space Marine lieutenants available. Remember this one print run only Magic the Gathering Warhammer crossovers that were going to be sold out in five minutes, never to be reprinted. Yet, yeah, they're still on the counter two weeks on. Feel free to leave a comment about that one specific incident where this wasn't the case because I would love to hear that. But the general model of engineered scarcity is a thing that drives me up the fucking wall anyway. And let's be honest, if your product needs to just be bought now and not considered and will be unavailable later, it's probably not a very good product. Number Outbuying your interest and commitment levels. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to buy way too much stuff and you're going to bitch out because you can't paint it all and you can't build it all and that you are an inferior hobbyist. That's not what I'm saying. That is a low-key banger of an insult. You're an inferior hobbyist. What I am saying is that you may get bored of looking at building and painting what is essentially the same thing. Like, I was really into Tau for a while. I got all the Tau, and I mean, like, all of the Tau. All of them. Forge World, Old Metal Cast, pretty much all of it. And, you know, before I could finish building all of them, and before I could paint any of them, or even play with parts of the army, I then got into Gundams and, like, first edition Lord of the Rings. So... Yeah. You can get bored of the same kind of stuff, and you might just need a refresher. Like, maybe your thing is that you're going to get into Star Wars Legion, or you're going to start building terrain. Maybe you just go all the way and get into Railway Scenics or something. And of course, this is great from a creative standpoint. It's quite liberating, and you get so much from it. You know, trying new things. But the problem is then, behind you, literally for me, there is the looming shadow of shit you previously bought and you won't do anything with. And yeah, it can it can sit back there until I'm in the mood for it and you can probably do the same. However, this is an entirely additional space for the purpose of this hobby, so this shit can just sit in here behind me. Give me Yappa Pie Indian Punishment Strap number five. It doesn't make you happy. Ooh, the big themes now, the big themes. Of course, I'm not talking about everyone. This is a subject in itself that doesn't apply to everyone at all. There's many, many reasons people get into this hobby. For me personally, it was to be creative while my actual creative profession didn't allow me to be creative. For others, it can be the sense of community you get when you go into your friendly local game shop and buy something, or it can simply be the act of buying something to brighten your day. My boy makers who just went on a Greg's run, he does that, but he does it with an FX9, so. Don't feel too bad. Suffice to say, the reason that you get into it and the reason that you overbuy potentially might not be the healthiest thing for yourself and definitely your bank account. If you overbuy with the idea and the intention that building and painting is going to be your little chill zen zone, what do you do when it stops being your little chill zen zone? Or if you buy a little box of models to brighten your day with the hope of doing them when you get back home, what happens when buying a little box of models to do and not doing them at home doesn't brighten your day? you may end up stuck with a mountain of shit that actually has the opposite effect on your mental health. Me? No. I love things. I love stuff. I love toys. I love making things. I like looking at boxes. Uh, but if you're coming home to it and you're surrounded by it, maybe potentially that's not good for you. But that's you. 
There's so much good stuff out there. Models, paints, tools, terrain materials, just scenic bits. And of course, you might be able to afford and get them all. Uh, but do you really need them all, like right now? If the answer is yes, fair enough. Because when I bought them, I absolutely needed them right now as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you got into the hobby too early, please let me know down in the comments what potentially you regret. I don't really want to use the word regret because it's, it's toy soldiers. Or did you dodge the bullet entirely and manage to pace yourself from the outset into your veteranship of the hobby? Veteranship? A huge thank you to my patron community, of course. It is the discussions that go on in that little Discord chat we have that I kind of look at and dip in and out of now and again. Just pull a little something something out to chat with and chat about online. So... Yeah, thank you guys. I'm going to go and have that Greg's, and I should probably get started on those three Conquest starter boxes I have at home. Cheers. I'm out of here. What would the class me? Some tomato rolls, mate. Some tomato rolls, <laughs> mate. I may as well be there. made of vegetables. You grab them out of me. Let okay. me find something. Uh, here we go. Here you go. These, these Warhammer books. We'll put them in the Warhammer <laughs> books. One, mate. There we go. There's two. There we go. It's grease proof. Grease proof. There we Is go. Is it flaky pastry proof, mate? That's your it's real. still sealed, so definitely. Nice. Bye. Bye. Bye.